welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain your We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please, uh, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple less from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we gonna hit you with them stole cold facts and allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the nerdiverse welcome to masters of the nerdiverse where we always have such sites to show you i'm of course your host mike g and you can always find our podcast on itunes stitcher spreaker soundcloud youtube the lost planet of thundera just make sure you don't run into Mumra or Monkeyan. Those are the only two villains I remember from Thundercats for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the Loon Attacks, but don't ask me to to list any of them. Oh jeez. Oh, yeah, it's just that's all I got. Don't any further, and I just start my nose starts bleeding blood at that point. I'm think, <laughs> thinking way too right. hard. Oh man, definitely happy to have back to the show Winter man. How you doing? Well, I'm doing great, you know. It's been a, a long day, but it's I uh, like what what they shared out the last week's episode. People were like, "You got to do more of that." Ah. So I'm glad that uh, I could finally do it. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I found this to be a very therapeutic outlet. You know what I mean? Doing this show, right? It's just like get all this stuff off your chest over the past week and just be able to talk to someone about it. Man, you just feel good, you know? I'm happy that you're getting a well reception because you're actually great. So I definitely thank you for being back on the show. Thank you. And it's, even though it's like things that I would normally uh, wouldn't like talk about, you find them, you find the very interesting news articles that I <laughs> haven't even heard about. I, I've, uh, I'm always in deep into the, uh, like the internet verse reg- right. in regards to like YouTube stuff, but then, uh, or like video games. Like yeah, man. Can, yeah. Well, like I'll um, uh, I'll wait till how with your week. Yeah, man. Before you go with no, that. no worries. Yeah, just know that I scour about seven or eight different news outlets every single time. Okay. Just to see if there's any yeah. like changing information or maybe something that was left out of another site. So it's I comb oh. through a couple of them to get the news, and as you can tell, news has been kind of slow this time of year. It's just usually it's like. Uh, five or six different articles, but it's like two or three or four. So, but that's fine. Okay. You know what I mean? It makes for a lean yeah, show. Did, yeah, I didn't realize that there was like a an off time for like uh, nerd news. <laughs> uh, this is like why did, why can't we get EA back in the news? Let, let get <laughs> EA to do something. That's for all the like, wrong uh, reasons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But let's get them to like, you know what? We we're tired of listening to the fans. We're gonna do a complete reversal. Just go back to the original game. Yeah, just go to what <laughs> just go to the gaming dark ages. You yeah. Know, I hope you guys like NBA Live two thousand five, because that's all we're gonna put out for the next three <laughs> years. Just specifically that year, over and over again. Or, like, the, what they'll do is, like, we have a lot of games, like, shooter games that go, like, World War II, because that's, like, a classic shooter era oh, game. Oh, jeez, yeah. Could, like, will there be a time for, like, sports games where they'll go to, like, the the origins of football, and it's just a bunch of, like, college <laughs> people without That would be so pen. lame. Can you imagine, like, the origins <laughs> of baseball? And it's just a bunch of dudes <laughs> in the desert, like, <laughs> just, just oh, try, figuring it out. Well, you know? I wanted the origins of hockey, which is just like eh, you like you have to be careful on the on the ice or you'll fall through. And you, and you might you die. Like, yeah. Jeez, it'll be <laughs> like uh, this. There was this game back in the day on the, on the Genesis called Arch Rivals, where it was a uh, mix of like pit fighter and like basketball, where you could punch the guy to get the ball from them, like, and you could fight on the court. So I wanted like a mixture of like. Uh, of like uh, Need, for Sp- Need for Speed Underground and like hockey where nice. there's, there's like all types of pitfalls on the ice and a polar bear can just come up and grab you and drag you under the water if you're not careful and, and <laughs> they could be like slapstick multipliers nice. and, then, and they have like a Mighty Ducks DLC that'd be sick dude <laughs> do the flying V 
movies. Man, yeah. that's money. Do you watch hockey at all? Or no, I try. Uh, no, I. I have a friend that's a diehard Ducks fan, so I go to the games wherever and wherever she invites me. Yeah. But, uh, but I try. I. It's. I understand what hockey <laughs> is. Okay. And I understand it's a pill. It's just something that. Ah, uh, I just. I, I was never a real Kings guy. I was never, right. you know, really into it. I like. I do like the New York Rangers because they're just like saying Rangers. Rangers. That's it. That's, that's as far as I've, I've, yeah. uh, I've expressed my hockey love. But uh, I, I, I thought you were about to say that you're a Rangers fan because Kevin Smith is one. And oh, I'm like I, I'm gonna have to disconnect. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> <don't> <laughs> thank you, thank you for your time. Goodbye. Right. Yeah. No, I try not to. I really try every day not to model my life after Kevin Smith. So nothing against the guy. It's just no. Just, yeah. Even yeah. I. Yeah. Yeah, you like there's I I don't get it. I have a lot of friends who are like um uh, it, it's I would call it virtue signaling going, "Oh, I'm such a hipster. I watch Kevin Smith videos." <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> uh, it, it, so that it la- it lets the other people in the room know that they're that they're woke individuals. Oh jeez. <laughs> what world are we living in where Kevin Smith movies equals woke? You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah. Has anybody seen? I like, don't get me wrong. I love Clerks. I love Dogma, even though it's very polarizing. I right. love Chasing Amy. You know what I mean? I like I like those movies, but man, and I, I liked Red State myself. I, you know what? I've never seen Red State. It's one of those where I just was like, uh, I don't. It, it seems taxing, you know? Just, right. The the show seems ta- it seems like a drag. It's just ugh. I need to watch it. It's just, it's on my list. And I saw Tusk, and I was just was like, oh jeez. Oh I, well, you yeah. know the origin story of Tusk? Yes, it was like, on okay. the. Uh, I listened to uh, the small cast, you know, uh, the smod cast. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I, the reason I started listening to it because I wanted to hear the origins of Tusk. And, okay. And that's the same episode that they have the best chocolate chip cookie of all time. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, go, they talk like for four hours about the best chocolate chip cookie he ever ate in his life. And I'm just like, I tried ordering it. It was like $25 for three cookies. I was like, dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. <laughs> Yeah, make that at my own house. Like twenty of them, dude. He's so he's so opulent. Him and Harley Quinn are just eating chocolates back in 2010 or something. Yeah, jeez. Oh man. Anyway, (laughs) this has been the what's up with Kevin Smith Smith cast. Yeah, Yeah, we love slash hate Kevin Smith cast. No, I love the Kevin Smith man. He's he's hype. You know, he's hype about all this stuff. Please have us on your show. I know, right? Plug plug. (laughs) Yeah. Please, can I be? Part of if Fat Man on Batman. I'm fat too. If and I you like... ever want to have a, if you ever want a comic book made, just let us know. Please, I'll draw yeah. it for you. I'm yeah. fat. I'm a fat man, and I love Batman. Just, just, just do it. I can be with Mark Bouchard and all those guys. Yeah, I know stuff Hashtag about stuff. Bat, bat. Hashtag. Hashtag bat, bat. Let's make a movement. <laughs> let's, let's make it viral. Yeah, he will listen to what we have to say. Our little fledgling po- podcast. Oh man! So we spent twenty minutes on Kevin Smith. Yeah. I know, a good solid a chunk of twenty. Right. Man, we should get paid for this, dude. Oh man! So how was your week? Oh, it's been very uh, weird. I've had I have the next seven or eight days off d- uh, due to the holidays and just saving up some part uh, paid time off. Mm-hmm. So I'm just doing stuff around the house. Um, putting buttons in for suspenders and failing on that. Awesome. You know? Yeah. Really become really solidifying my hipster lifestyle. Dude. I even bought a beanie today. That's what's so, up. Yeah. And, uh, I'm going to yeah. start wearing beanies. Uh, just, just don't wear toques. You know what I'm saying? You know, the difference. The toque. Or it's like oh. super. The long beanie. Yeah. Uh-uh. That is weird. It's not a good look, man. Yeah. And and if I'm going to be honest, the reason why I bought beanies is because of um, I watched the YouTube channel H3H3 uh, uh, Productions. And, and Ethan Klein, he wears like a beanie every episode. So I'm like, I want to be like him. That's I'm awesome. <laughs> He's yeah. my hero. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and that brings up something that I uh, was working on Friday. Mm. I watched a clip of his podcast, and he was talking about this thing called Hashtag Elsagate. Okay. Have you heard about this? No. 
All right, so there is um, an issue going on with YouTube right now of demonetization. Right. And from what I gather, that this is a separate issue, but still somewhat connected, because a lot of these videos still are uh, monetized. Right. And what what it is is that these are videos that are like targeted towards kids, and they're very in the content in them. We'll just say is not kid appropriate. We'll mm. just say. Yeah. Okay. So hence the word Elsa, like you'll have uh, the instance that I have with it is uh, one of my friend's uh, kids. They're on YouTube in the, like an app for kids, YouTube kids app. Right. And then one of the first videos they saw was uh, one of like Deadpool shooting himself in the face, what? which is which is like something that is like, a, OK, we get it as adults. We're we're de- we know who Deadpool is. Right. But uh, it's still it's that kind of like led me down the rabbit trail of like, oh, there's like other videos of like cartoons Mm -hmm. and like all this other weird stuff. It seems to always be Elsa, Spider-Man or the Joker. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I I believe it, man, because it's YouTube and Google, for that matter, are painting people Mm -hmm. in the corner to make desperate moves. You know what I mean? You're playing with people's money. So right. they're going to do all the bad candidate shenanigans they can for Google to rank them on YouTube. You know what I mean? And not demonetize their videos. Right. So, so you may be playing like House of a Thousand Corpses, but you're going to label that bad boy Elsa goes to space camp. You know right. what I mean? And, and make sure all your keywords and all your tags re- reflect child, uh, not even, ch- not even child, like, like content, but like, family friendly content you know what i mean yeah and they search the highly ranking search terms on that search algorithm which are like you said elsa spider-man harley quinn you know what i'm saying like the joker right. and then it's something completely different I, I believe it man that's that's pretty nuts yeah and it's it's always like it's not just like a channel that does a few of these videos as type of a gag. It's always like a channel that specifically does these type of videos and or there's I think there's been a few cases of like a channel that's been around for a few years and then they just delete all their old videos mm-hmm. and then they start releasing these weird Elsa ones and it's just a uh, uh it's it's very weird. Yeah, so that was my weekend. <laughs> he fell down. Reddit. He fell down an Elsa hole. Huh? <laughs> yeah, and there's like a Reddit uh, thread for it or page hashtag ElsaGate. No, it's okay, man. Like one weekend, I fell down. I hit the Quan hole, and that's this old dance that was new at the time. And I just watched <laughs> a bunch of hit hit the Quan videos for like two three days straight. My family started worrying about me because that's oh, all I so. that's all I needed to do. You know? Yeah. I'll do that a few times. Like I'll, uh, I'll go and you know what? I want to listen to an Everclear song. Yeah, and then I'll, it'll just turn to a YouTube of like they're all all their songs sound the same. Right. But yeah, I, uh, yeah, that's for all you Everclear fans out there. No nah, man, I fell down an Apex Twin hole where I just wanted to watch like Chris Cunningham videos. You ever yeah. seen those of like Rubber Johnny and Widow Liquor and Come to Daddy and all those weird, super strange videos? That this guy made back in like in the in the nineties and two thousands. Okay, it, maybe I haven't seen. <laughs> yeah, it's super disturbing. I showed one to my friend at work earlier, and he mm-hmm. just he didn't talk to me for like thirty minutes after I showed it to him. He was like, "Why?" I was like, "Cause you need to know." You know. You well, need there to understand. is there is a YouTube video that have like sixty eight million views, and it's a guy who is undressing a baby doll. Okay. And... <laughs> And with like weird music play in the background, and then it ends with him like shoving a syringe, syringe into the plastic baby, and then yeah. it's very weird. <laughs> yeah, the internet, internet's filled with creepy pasta, man. You know, it's just yeah. weird stuff. Like my favorite is uh, is salad fingers. You know, you oh, ever watch... sa- yeah, rusty spoons. Yeah, my I like. <laughs> I love rusty spoons. Yeah. Now I could I could handle that. That that's uh. That's like creepy pasta comedy. Yeah, it's not the legit stuff that that keeps you up at night. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I think what we're seeing now, if I do like a big picture, like there's the internet that your parents use, which mm-hmm. is just like 
Facebook and nothing else. Right. And there's uh, the internet that we use, which is st- like we we are well versed in the internet, most right. likely. And then you have like uh, the high school and under, which is like so it's even it's kind of foreign to me because yeah. like there's Snapchat involved. It's so weird. There, yeah. Snapchat. Um, no. No owning any song whatsoever. Like, there's no buying an album. There's just listening to it on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, the whole yeah. album. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if I have to hear that song, Gucci Gang, one more time, anyone no. listening to me, I am going to Come flip on. out. We don't, men- <laughs> we don't mention Gucci Mane on this podcast. Uh, he's been Wait, forbidden. It... Is that his name? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gucci Gang. I think it's the same guy. I don't know. Okay. I'm not yeah. hip at all, man. The I one tried. that says like Gucci Gang like 20 different times. Yeah, and all that's the song. That's that's yeah. lyrics. That's he's they're dropping bars. Oh, don't get me started on on new age hip hop. And then there's the there's the creepy web with all the weird stuff, oh, yeah. all the weird shit. And then there's the dark web where all the do dirt stuff happens that nobody's supposed to know about. Right, like you can buy crack with some Bitcoin. Yeah, some man. <laughs> Like those are the ones that like like uh, secret agents use to like do backwater yeah. deals and stuff. We don't talk about that in Eric, so no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Oh no. man, it, did anything else come up on your week besides uh, uh, uh suspenders? I, I bought Call of Duty. I nice. bought Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, World War Two. I'm enjoying it so far. Good man. Uh, it's definitely like. Say you go to a restaurant and you order, like, uh, I would like the moldy cheese, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it's like, uh, you eat it, and then people go, like, this is disgusting. This is the, I, this is moldy cheese. And it's like, well, you ordered it. Yeah. I don't know what you expect. What, what do you expect, man? <laughs> yeah. Same thing with Call of Duty. Like, you're, you're trying, to, you're expecting a filet mignon game, and yeah. what you're getting is, like, Burger King. Damn. Yeah. Burger, yeah. You go yeah. in knowing, like, man. Yeah. This is not what I want, but it's what I need. It's yeah. Kind of ideals. Mm-hmm. And I've been there before, man. Like, with certain games, I'll buy just on obligation. You know? <laughs> it's like, I need to know how this version of it is. Right. So, so how was, yeah. How was uh, your week, though? Man, my week was super counterfragilistic. It's B. I won't finish that. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh man! Let me fly through my week real quick because I I did a little uh, bit of a lot. Uh, still playing the Justice Two, which is mm-hmm. an, a constant. That's the same thing. It's like, oh man, I wish I had like this Italian pizza with garlic and some you know types of good stuff. But I'm gonna order Papa John's instead. And, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what injustice is at this point. Something I can just it's a it's a it's a creature comfort. You know what I mean? But it's in all this stuff. Um. Played a bunch of that to get the uh, Justice League costumes for certain characters. I'm a I'm a completist, so I have to do all that stuff, which is it's in my blood, dude. Um, I also picked up Assassin's Creed Origins. Oh no! Which is it, <laughs> oh. it's just good, man. I actually I'm enjoying it. I, right. I don't really oh. like Ubisoft like that, but Uber cost. Uber cost. <laughs> It's yeah. funny because I, I booted up the game and I'm like, it's either this or Marvel and I'm not going to buy Marvel. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> right. So I'm like, and people and five people that I respect the opinion of said it was good. So I just was like, all right, it's on sale on yeah. on PlayStation Plus. Let me check it out. So I feel like we need to root out these five people uh, <laughs> like communist 1950s Red Scare. What like, you want to <laughs> give them a Turing test to make sure they're human? Yeah, like I have never been, nor was a a Ubisoft EA employee. <laughs> yeah, you got to They got to. They got to. They got to take the test from Blade Runner. You know, with the red, with the red dot in your eye. Oh yes. And if they're a freaking replicant, they just bust through a wall like like a like the Kool Aid man. I'll send you a link to this video I saw about Assassin's Creed EA Origins in uh, what it's titled EA by this Origins. guy named uh, Video Game Donkey. Don't, Pretty funny. Don't get it twisted. Like, as soon as you boot up the game, they're like, spend money. You want to buy oh, this really? Egypt skin? I'm like, nah, man, I just want to play the game. I'll, I'll, <laughs> if I want to do that later, I'll do that later. And it's like so shoehorned in. It's like, 
you want to buy for the Egyptian pack and for the Cerebus pack. I'm like, I just started. Like, yeah. let me play. Oh. The, I don't even know how to play. Yeah, I don't want the Anubis Unleashed Edition, you know? It's fine. You know? I'll get there. But the game so far, it's fun. It's very... almost feels like The Witcher. The Witcher 3. Oh. Which is a game I absolutely love. Yeah, that was a good game. You know, and it's like, very open world. It's not, it doesn't feel hand just yet. And you get to ride a camel. I'm very happy about that. Very happy yeah, about that. Not enough camel riding in games. In games, period. I'm like, where's right. all the camel riding? Dude. Hashtag camel riding. Hashtag, oh. yeah, where are my camels at? Where are my camels Take at? <laughs> where are the tan camels at? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was gonna go there. I see you went there. <laughs> eh? Eh? Great minds think alike, man. Yes. Speaking of minds, uh, I, I started watching this uh, Netflix show called Mind Hunter. Yeah. Yo, you know what I'm talking about? I yeah, I binged watched that all. You you yeah. finished it? Yeah. Ooh, that show was good, man. That show was I pretty give good. It, I give it like. Uh, 4.8 out of 5 stars. Which I don't do. I go 4 out of 5. I don't do points. Right. But uh, it's it's phenomenal. And it's I, I can't wait for more. But we have to wait two years. Yeah. So pretty much what the show is about. It's about almost like the history of criminal psychology. Almost. Right. Like it starts back in what? The f- 60s or 70s? I think it's the 70s. Right. Because uh, J. Edgar Hoover is already out. There, right. This is becoming the new age of the CIA slash FBI slash, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it's really just a really intellectual breakdown or just almost a thinking piece on how the criminal mind works and how the mind works in general. And it's yeah. it's very fascinating. I'm really into it. It's like each episode to me felt like it could have been its own movie sort of thing right of them interviewing the bad guys and and it was done tastefully to the point of like i i tried watching an episode of early criminal minds right and it's pretty much uh B, bdsm porn oh, jesus christ no man <laughs> so, it's on abc uh, how can that be well it's either that or like there's like a bunch of like a bunch of old women and men watch it, who are like enjoying watching these women getting captured, getting locked up in cages. Oh, like, it's very weird. And, man. And, but Mindhunters does it tastefully, right? So <laughs> yeah. you're more, you're more like Silence of the Lambs than Seven, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <Although laughs> I, I could even handle Seven, but Criminal Minds they only have like 48 minutes. <laughs> Uh, plus commercial time to fit that all in. So, so they got to get to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, instead of like, yeah. It, yeah. So shout out to Criminal Minds. Shout out to Criminal Minds. Keep it filthy. We love it. Yeah. And shout outs to Mind Hunter. Definitely check it out, man. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. One of the better original Netflix series to come out this year. Right. Uh, like speaking of Netflix series, I also marathon The Punisher, which I really wanted <laughs> wow. to talk about. Talk, I've yet to watch it yet. Talk about feast or famine, huh? It's like yeah. all intellectual, and it's just Metallica and gun noises. Uh, I will say this: The Punisher is my second favorite Netflix outing so far, and yeah, be- behind Daredevil season two. And is it is that when the Punisher enters? Yes, Daredevil season two. Okay. Uh, and the Punisher is really just it's really a psychological drama. More than just an action film, you know what I mean? It's more a deep dive into Frank Castle's neuroses and how he has to deal with it. And it's right. a re- it's a very good commentary on uh, P- PTSD. I'm P- assuming P- P- PTSD, um, how the government treats our veterans and how the veterans kind of deal with that. You know what I mean? Like coming back home when there's no war. You know what I mean? How do you mentally recoup? and find a new normal, you know what I mean? And the show right. it, the show has something to say, and, and I can tell just by its arrangement. And I think it kind of answers that question, but it also contradicts itself. When you have Frank Castle blowing people away with a shotgun at point-blank mm-hmm. range, you right. know? So it's kind of a snake eating its own tail. The funny thing 
I found interesting about this show is that it has no ties to anything Marvel. You know what I'm saying? Besides like, oh, okay. besides like Karen Page and other, uh, I would say, Punisher characters, there's no linking of the universes. There's no mention of the, of the Avengers Tower or Thor or the incident. You know, it's that very, incident. that's interesting. It, so yeah. it really wants to be its own thing, which I, which I can respect. And the Punisher always in comics has always been either, Depending on who's writing, like Garth Annis wrote him, tour, it's just him. It's just Frank. And, and yeah. he doesn't really interact with the other heroes. Or he's like in Civil War where Captain America is disgusted with him and all the other heroes think he's crazy. You know what I mean? So he, even with the Punisher, he's he's never just middle ground with the Marvel Universe. He's either completely outside of it or he's so knee deep into it that the other heroes are getting in his way. You know? Mm-hmm. And he becomes a lot more... N- less lethal when he has to share a screen with Spider-Man or the Daredevil or... Yeah, you have to tone him down a bit if you're going <laughs> to yeah him into the universes. Right. You, you, yeah. can't, you, you very much have to tone him down. I remember when he was on the animated series, the Spider-Man animated series. Yeah. He, he didn't even shoot bullets. He shot like laser pew-pew guns. And he used <laughs> non-lethal ordnance. And I'm like, I get it. You want to shoehorn Punisher in, but Man, don't neuter the guy. I mean, I get it. Because even in that show, it was so heavily censored that Spider-Man couldn't even throw a punch. All he did was th- <laughs> all he did was either shoot webs or wow. kick at people. He never punched anything, which is funny because they were really the uh, the board was really on them tough to make sure the show was PG, like super PG. Wow. So having characters like Blade and Morbius and the Punisher, it's like, uh, what? Now that would be something I would want to see—a crossover between the Punisher and Blade, the Vampire Hunter. Yeah, it's funny you say that. There's a comic that used to be out called Midnight Suns, and yeah. they were kind of like a macabre version of the Avengers. And the Midnight Suns consisted of Blade and Ghost Rider and the Punisher and All Doctor right. Strange and and I no, think it, the Living Mummy or something like that. Wasn't a Constantine. In that oh, group? you're thinking of DC. He was in Justice oh, League yeah. Dark. Yeah, I, wait. I, I just hear the listeners shutting off. I know the difference oh. between Marvel and DC. <laughs> Boo this man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. It's not a joke. <laughs> I'm for real. Please listen to what I say. Yeah. Speaking of DC jokes, I got to see the Justice League this weekend. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's, let's talk about that right now. How, all right, how let's, did... let's get into it. Yeah. What did you like about it? <laughs> I like I liked a lot about it, man. Actually I liked the movie. Like I just legit liked it. Um which is funny because not a lot of people did. And it's because and I totally get it. This is an extremely flawed movie. Like <laughs> like like very flawed. Like like you said, it's a it's a filet mignon that's been that's been covered in ketchup. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it has like frozen peas and uncooked hash browns on it. You know what I'm saying? It's just everything around it is toxic, but the heart of the movie is what I really love. Um, I love some of the character interactions. I don't want to spoil anything because especially if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah. And it's a fairly new movie, so I'm not going to spoil anything, but this, the truth be told, there's nothing really to spoil. You know what I mean? It's one of those. It's like Thor Ragnarok. Wow. The same thing yeah. with Thor Ragnarok. There was nothing to spoil in Thor Ragnarok. You kind of knew what was going to happen, right? Ragnarok was going to Yeah, right. Ragnarok was going down, whether, yeah. you, whether you thought it wasn't or not. But out of out of five, I'll give Justice League like a three, 3.5 out of five. Okay. So that's, that's worth a watch, but you're not going to buy it sort of thing. No, 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 no. I want to see it again because yeah. I think I missed some stuff, but... Is it going to be part of my DVD collection? Nah, man. Maybe if they do like an Ultimate Edition. Yeah, in the $5 bin. Right. At Walmart. Okay. If it comes on like uh, HBO one night on the free cable weekend, I'll record uh-huh. it. But Oh. Okay. If they have like some weird cut of the movie like they did with Batman vs. Superman, I'll buy that just to see the, the extra footage and stuff. Yeah. But this movie on its own does not merit any kind of accolade or... Are prestigious viewing. It's just, 
It's meh. I equate it to like an episode of Justice League Unlimited. You know what I mean? Like the old cartoon. Yeah. In well, a good I, way. I, I think what's going to be like, it's going to be a common trend for DC because it's already happened a, like a few times already is that they're going to come out with the movie. And then what the, I think what they normally do when they show a movie, they have like a test audience. Right. The test audience is not going to react the way they want. So then they're going to cut it down and then release that which makes it even worse. And then they'll release the extended edition, which Whoa. will be the best one. I'm going to tell All you right. right now, the biggest enemy to a movie is not its sales. The biggest enemy to a movie is not its critics. It's not even That's its true. fans. It's its studio. Studios ruin Ooh. more movies every year than yeah. anything a, a director, a DP, an actor could do. And it's right. because studio interference of people who don't know the the source material people who don't respect the source material make demands based on demographics and in 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 numbers you know what i mean right it's and that's crazy what I'm saying like once they get like a bad uh like a bad um review i guess from the test audience mm -hmm. that's when they'll uh, that's when they go we the the studio will come we have to edit this to make this more appealing for the audience right yeah, and that's why the 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 CEO of, of WB Warner Brothers is in hot water now because he was the guy who in, in, enforced the solid two hour time frame for this movie. He said he don't want it to be longer than two hours, no matter what. So make whatever edits you need to get it under two hours. And the movie literally came in like at an hour and fifty nine minutes. You know what I'm saying? Something with credits. Yeah, and you can't do that with. Uh... Uh, the, these type of movies where there's like a bunch of heroes in it. In exactly. Hour, you need to do at least two and a half. And the thing is, it's like not even a bunch of heroes. It's a bunch of heroes that aren't developed in the major eye. Like right. in the Justice League, I mean, in the Avengers film, um, Thor has been established, Cap has been established, and Iron Man was established, and Hulk was established for that matter. The only right. two people that you really had to introduce was was Black Widow, which is actually already established in Iron Man 2, and really Hawkeye. That's it. But in the Justice League, you have to reestablish a new Batman, because technically we didn't see a lot of him in BVS. You have to establish the Flash. You have to establish Aquaman. And you have to establish Cyborg. And also have a story. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way that's going to be possible and good in under two hours. Right. You know, each, each, each of those characters deserve their own standalone film. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's, it's a shame that this movie is a critical and box office failure because of studio interference. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's crazy it's to me. It's really bad. And I'm scared for DC, man. I don't know what they're going to do. They got to do something. Well, I just looked up, by the way, what I was talking about was uh, John Constantine. He was in a group called Justice League Dark. Yeah, Justice League Dark. What they need to do, make that a new movie. Man, just <laughs> that would give you. Let me give you the lineup. John Constantine. Yep. Okay. Madam Xanadu. Yep. Do, uh, Dead Man. Dead Man, yep. Uh, Zatanna. Zatanna, the, uh, the, the magician Zatanna. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Black Orchid. Yep. Uh, Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing's my man. And then Frankenstein, which I didn't know was a comic book character. Yeah, Fra <laughs> there's legit Frankenstein in the DC Universe, dude. Yeah, I, I clicked on the picture and it's him holding a gun. I'm like, yep, that's yeah, DC. He's for pretty it. much just Hellboy, dude. He's just, <laughs> yeah. he's just Hellboy. So you know what? They were supposed to make a, a Justice League dark film, but it was lined up for Guillermo del Toro to direct it. Of but course, he stepped out of it because he's been like in a directing slump or something, or he did it to do Shape of Water or something. But he was supposed yeah. to do uh, Justice League dark, but it just fell through. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's how these things go, man. You know, it's like... It's, speaking about Hellboy, uh, just a side, uh, did you know that they're making a, a new Hellboy? See, yeah. They're rebooting the franchise? Yeah, the uh, the sheriff from Stranger Things is playing Hellboy. Yeah, I found out by a BuzzFeed uh, picture article about yeah. him working out to be Hellboy. <laughs> he's, he's getting pretty loose, man. He's getting cut. Yeah. Nothing beats... Uh, J.K. Simmons getting cut for Justice League just to be in it for like two seconds. <laughs> J.K. Simmons got ultra ripped, like like stupid ripped. He looked like Master Roshi from Dragon Ball. Right. Just to be in the movie for two seconds. 
They, they start calling them Jim Gordon, like like G Y M. There you go. It was dumb. yeah, but I agree with you. DC is uh, on a on a track to nowhere. There's too many chefs in the kitchen, mm-hmm. and it's also the market is already saturated with superhero movies. It's yeah, kind of like. So here's a very ranch boy example. Uh, cows have four stomachs, from what I've heard. Right. And and so we've already they've already eaten the grass once, which is the Marvel movies. Right. And now we're supposed to eat it again with DC movies. So what's gonna be next? There, like a Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> there could be only one, man. Yeah. I think there's enough room for both. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. this superhero genre is on its way out. And I hate to say that, but it is. Yes. It's it's been ten years, right? Right. And some new hotness is gonna come out. It always does. Some new action star driven genre is gonna be create out of this. But they're never gonna go away. It's like people oh, still no. make westerns. People still make found footage films. People still make love stories. It's just it's gonna be on a smaller scale, right? And Marvel's gonna keep doing what they're doing. And as long as DC gets some really talented people to take the reins, because they just seem so it's like they're a rudderless ship right now. They don't know what to do. You know what I mean? They're scrambling. They need to get bought by uh, Universal Studios. Oh. <laughs> and <then> uh. turn... <laughs> Turn into like, well, you have Marvel and Disney, so how about Universal Ooh. Studios at DC? <laughs> but DC is already owned by Warner Brothers, man. That's that's weird. Oh, well, then Warner Brothers can open up their own <laughs> theme park. <laughs> yeah, it's called Six Flags. <laughs> oh, oh, this is this is writing itself right See? here. Six Flags with the DC universe, man. You know, think, I've, yeah. I'm pretty sure I went on a ride at a Six Flags that was like evil Superman. Yeah, there's there's the Superman ride, there's the Batman yeah. ride, there's Riddler's Revenge, and God knows what. I haven't been to a theme park in forever, but yeah, yeah. me either. But yeah, okay, so they already are taking my idea into See? consideration. Like great minds think alike, my friend. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And on that note, that's why I need to move to L.A. Yeah, man. They, they need to hear my they need to hear my ideas. Like, well, I'm not just some bum on the street yelling at executives. No, nah, just stand outside the DC uh, headquarters and just scream with a bullhorn yeah. and say these ones are free. And eventually, <laughs> like a year down the road, you'll see your idea. You'll be like, that's yeah. me. Remember yeah. me? I, I submitted a script to Dark Horse when I was 12 years, <laughs> 15 or something like that. 12 or 15. But my character was named Blood Horse. You, I know you remember Blood Horse. He was the best. I don't remember. He's half, he's half man, half horse, all blood. What? <laughs> I just made Double. that up. <laughs> okay. That, that's money. Oh, yeah, I didn't just Google it right now. Yeah, don't, don't, don't Google <laughs> Blood Horse, dude. You'll probably find something gnarly. Don't do it. You're, you're going to find something a, in the dark web you don't want to see. There's a website called bloodhorse.com. Don't, don't, right. click, don't click into it. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> and, and on that note... <laughs> Let's go into the news. All right. All right. First thing. Do you, do you have like music that you play when you're about to go on the news? Like, I don't remember. Like, uh, do you have like? You know what? It 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 sometimes it depends on how the flow of the conversation goes. If there's a okay. pause, I'll throw in like a news stinger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm thinking I'm gonna do it. Since you mentioned it, I'm gonna throw it in this episode. All but, right. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty jazzy. I think I'm going to get a new stinger. Maybe like the theme to Marvel vs. Capcom 2 or something. I'm going to take you for a real ride. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Speaking of Marvel, Marvel names its new editor-in-chief this week, which is big, which is a big shakeup. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, man. Um, The guy before, I believe, was Alon- um, Axel oh, Alonso. Yeah. He was Marvel's editor for like 11 years, like 15 years, pretty much. All through the Bendis stuff, Alex was there. You know what I mean? Through the New Avengers, through Secret War, through Civil War. Uh, he's just always been there. And now this new guy who's... Honestly, I follow this guy on Twitter. His name is uh, CB... Yeah, pronounce it. Here I can't you know. I can't pronounce it. You do it for me. I can't pronounce it. Sabulski. Sabulski, yeah. Yeah. He was a talent um, coordinator. For Marvel for a very long time so he was the guy if you go to like a if you're an up-and-coming artist 
and you go to like a convention, he would look at your your portfolio, give you tips. And so are he, you saying you've done this? You've seen it? I've done this, right. and I have seen it. He's and he's salt of the earth. Oh wow! You know, he gave me some he gave me some hints and some tips on you know how to break into comics, and this is, could have happened to a better guy. He's he's one of those guys who's whose feet are on the ground. He's at the conventions. He travels all the way across the world to spread the gospel of Marvel. He goes to like China and Singapore a lot, you know, to to grow the, grow the brand recognition. And I'm curious to see what a, what him running the show without a Bendis is going to be for Marvel. Like, what is that? You know? So I'm very, it sounds interesting. I'm curious if uh, he'll, uh, they'll create a superhero for those particular markets. Or oh, like yeah. they'll pick up uh, a superhero from those markets. You know, or emphasize the ones that already exist, you know, like yeah. like Master of Kung Fu would be a cool, like, uh, someone to bring back into the Marvel Universe heavy, you know what I mean? And they're always creating new characters, like Kamala Khan uh, with yeah, right. Miss Marvel, you know what I mean? Um, and one of my biggest things about diversity in comics is that if you're going to have a diverse character, don't piggyback off an existing character or change an existing character. Right. That's like, my biggest that... pet peeve. It bothers me. You know? Weren't they going to do that to Thor a while back? Well, they did it to Thor. Now, Thor is now oh. Jane Foster, who was a woman. So they changed, okay. except for making a brand new female character that has, they just made her Thor. You know what okay. I mean? Kind of like Miles Morales uh, being Spider-Man, which is fine. He's not yeah. Peter Parker. You know what I'm saying? He's his own... Right. He's his own thing, and it's fine with me if you want to build a mantle or build a lineage of heroes. I think one of the coolest things about DC Comics is that most of the heroes have lineage. Like, there's so many different flashes. There's, or Captain America. Or Captain America, or even uh, Batman, for that matter. Has, there's so many different Batmans, you know? Yeah. And it's, none of them are Bruce Wayne, their own character, who took on the mantle of Spider-Man, or took on the mantle of the Hulk for that matter, new generations of heroes. And I think that's cool, but I don't like it when they just insert thing to try to go into another audience without, without earning it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, and now that I think about it, it's probably extremely tough to uh, try to build a market for a new character Yeah, and get those comic books sold. Yeah, so, I remember uh, yeah. when they did it for Riri Williams, who was the new Iron Man. Uh, yeah. they, they changed her name to Ironheart so she could be her own character, which I think is cool. Even though I thought, yeah. even though I hoped her name would be female, which, you know, like F.E., you know. <laughs> yeah. That would be cool. But anyway. Um, Iron Girl. Iron yeah. Girl. But, I, you know, I think I like I like the idea of ma- of lineage and having a mantle, but I just think it needs to be earned. You know what I mean? It has to be worked toward and just don't insert character here and have like one comic right. explaining it. You know what I mean? So yeah, but um shout outs to C B Sabuski. Probably butchering his name. Sabulski uh, or something like that. Yeah man, he's he's the sweetest guy. He's pretty cool. Hopefully he has some good ideas and hires the right personnel. To uh, bring back Marvel Comics, man, because they've been kind of floundering recently. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Speaking about bringing back characters, uh, Dragon Ball Z Fighters adds three new characters to their roster. The game's coming out in February. I believe February 27th. I mean, that date may be wrong. But for all my Dragon Ball heads out there, they're adding Gotenks, Kid Buu, and Adult Gohan. Um, which is kind of like part of the duh meter. Like, these characters, of course, these characters are going to be in the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at the same time, this game looks so beautiful. I just I just want to see other characters in this engine. You know what I mean? Like, I'm super excited to play as Gotenks. And I saw his... They did an actual video of his gameplay. And it just looks amazing, dude. They put... Uh, Arc System puts so much attention to detail into their models that it's, it's just... It, as an anime fan... And as a, especially a Dragon Ball fan, it's something like you've wished for since you were a kid. You know what I mean? Seeing something with such high fidelity and, high, and at such detail and and loving care, it's, it's it's so cool. I can't wait for this game to come out. All right. So, um, is this the latest Dragon Ball Z game that's come out, or 
I, yeah. I, I, I'm out of the loop with a lot of Dragon Ball Z stuff. Oh, no, man. This is the latest game that comes out next year. There's Dragon Ball Xenoverse okay. 2 exists, but that's more of like a role-playing game, I think. It's like a it's like a MMORPG in a weird way. You create your own character and stuff like that. Or this is a straight-up okay. fighting game. This is like Guilty Gear uh, Street Fighter 2. Oh, okay. okay. So that's it's cool. Yeah, it's the first 2D plane Dragon Ball fighting game since Ultimate Battle 22. And for all my Dragon Ball heads who played that know how horrible that game was on the PlayStation. You have to use a pro action replay to play it because it was an import. Oh, that yes, takes me yeah. back. Yeah. I, I re- that's what I was trying to remember. Like, that, I remember, <laughs> uh, like, you had to put in, like, a CD. This was, like, PlayStation 1. Yep. You had to put in, like, a CD first. Mm-hmm. And then you had to, like, put, like, a spring on yep. the, uh... You had to, uh, you had to feng shui that bastard to get it to work, yeah. man. Oh, man. The pro action replay was my best friend because... I was such a Dragon Ball mark back when I was a kid. I used to play Dragon Ball GT, Final Bout on that thing, <laughs> Dragon Ball Legends, Dragon Ball Ultimate Battle 22. I played a lot of imports, like uh, a lot of the writing games, you know, the, uh, right. the, the shmups. Oh, man, it, that takes me back. <laughs> Good times. But, yeah, oh, Dragon Ball Z Fighters, I'm, that's, one, that's a day one buy for me. I, I, got, I have to know. I got to yeah. get online with it. I gotta put my hands on it. You know, it's gonna be dope. Now, have you been watching the the latest season of Dragon Ball, or like the most recent season? Yeah, I'm following. I'm following Super. I'm following Super. Yeah. yeah. Are you following Super? Well, I watched. <laughs> I watched a couple of minutes of it. It's like an episode where there's everyone turns into a zombie or something like that. Master Yoshi ah, is trying to look, yeah, I know what you're talking Master about. Master Yoshi's trying to look up a girl's skirt in the episode and I'm like, wait a minute. That sounds like I, Master Roshi. That sounds like yeah. Master Roshi. Yeah. And it was very it was very weird. It was like YouTube did like a twenty four seven stream yeah. of Dragon Ball Z. And it was like, Well, maybe I don't need to watch this yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dragon Ball Z Dragon Ball Super is weird, man. It's Right now, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's just people either absolutely love or absolutely hate. But with something this old and something with such a rabid fan base, there's nothing they could do that's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, just be if either be a part of the ride or don't mess with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's true. You know, so I, I'm digging it. I think it's funny. You know, I love I love pe- seeing people get salty over cartoons on the internet. It's the best. <laughs> you know. It just, yeah, it makes me I smile. I just ignore it now because it's like I have a, I have too many things out there that I, I'll I could be next. Give me give me a couple of years. I yeah. could be the next one they make fun of. Hey man, I bring I bring it on. Like we are the masters of the nerdiverse, but yeah. I, I'm not the master of pop culture. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get shit wrong. You know that's fine. <laughs> yeah. And when this when this podcast gets to a point where we're having avid fans correct us on every single episode i'm down for that man you know as long as i don't say anything too egregious you know what i'm saying like that goku was batman's dad or something nuts i don't think they're gonna want to call for our heads right too bad but yeah, it happens yeah or like if you mix up constantine is in the marvel universe see <laughs> yeah. i wasn't gonna bring that up again man <laughs> oh it, it's like i'm gonna be I'm going to be thinking about this all night now. No, man. I'm going to have to burn the scarlet letter into your back or something. Yeah. I'll just A for anime. Learn it. Oh, that's too funny, man. Yeah. Now, do you prefer the term anime or do you want us to go back to Japanimation? I use Japanimation. I only use Japanimation to piss people off. Yeah. Especially people who are way too about it. Like, yeah, man. I was watching Azamanga Dio. You know that cool Japanimation? Like you're so old. I'm like, no, I'm just messing with you, man. You know. That's funny. Don't you love Robno one and a half? I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. it's like watch Death Note now, therefore I am anime <laughs> master. <laughs> I've seen all one thousand episodes of One Piece. I am anime god now. Don't talk oh, Don't talk to sad. me or my son ever again. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Yeah. yeah. People trip me out, man. They get so upset. Like, they get so salty. And if you make little mistakes, you know, it's like, come on, man. Like, well, The thing that gets me is uh, 
what I'll do, I'll tell people that, hey, okay, I'm watching, uh, I'm going to watch and finish Hell Thing. Hell Sing? Hell Sing. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. And then they'll go, oh, well, then you're going to have to watch Black Butler next or something like that. <laughs> they just slide like, you up. <laughs> well, I'm like, A, what is a show that's called Black Butler that does not sound like an yeah. anime show? No, it's it anime, sounds, bro. It sounds like a ripoff of the movie called The Butler. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and then the, they just start throwing out all these names of different anime shows. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know if I'm ever going to watch this. No, yeah. man. People get excited. It's like, oh man, I just caught up to, uh, My Hero Academia. What? Now you got to watch, uh, The Big O. And now you got to go back and you got to fight. You got to watch all the episodes of, um, Attack on Titan. And once you finish those, I'm like, man, come on, dude. Yeah. Anime is, anime is not a, it's not an energy drink. It's a wine. You just gotta sip it. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't guzzle it down. You know, take it no, easy. No, I want to get my hands on some, like, Korean animation. Like, I want to see, yeah. like, some outside Japan. Oh, <laughs> man. You want, like, like, a super troopers? You want, like, Afghanimation? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, anime uh, from I, Afghanistan? That'd be dope. Yes. Like, I've seen animation from Russia, and they, they don't know what they're doing. No, nah, man. <laughs> It's cold. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's hard to animate when you're freezing, dude. It's yeah. cold. The jokes do not translate nah. over into America. Uh, Man. And, and it doesn't have, like, the weird funniness that, like, a lot of Japanese animation does. No, nah, man. Or, yeah. <laughs> I just want, like, a Zangif anime, which is him going on wacky adventures with his two bears. <laughs> and, like, the last boss is, like, Dalsum. And he gets KO'd by, by F- FADC into Super. Uh, speaking of Super, uh, S- Superman actor Henry-, Henry Cavill is contracted to do one more film. Uh, he's saying that the Superman will definitely be more lighthearted and more down to his roots. Uh, well, Just give him the money. Just get let him go. Let him go. <laughs> Just let him do it. Honestly... <laughs> After watching Justice League, he's up yeah. there. He's like one of my top Supermans. He does it. And when they let him do it, he does it. You know what I mean? Minus all the facial hair crap, which is so distracting. Oh, yeah. so distracting. Because you know, you know about that, right? Like how he was contractually obligated not to shave his mustache. I did not know that. Yeah. So he was, he was filming Mission Impossible six while they were doing reshoots for Justice League right. and. For the movie, for Mission Impossible 6, he grew this giant, like, Magnum P.I. mustache for the movie. And Wonder Brothers was like, uh, can he just shave that down for these quick scenes and you guys can just use prosthetics to put the beard back? They're like, hell no. Screw your movie. You know? Wow. He, he's contractually obligated to keep this face for us so you guys deal with it. So they spent a bunch of money digitally removing his, his face, his flavor catcher. For like a bunch of the scenes in Justice League, and it's very obvious. It's such oh bad God. CG. It's really, really obvious. And it's just like, oh man, it's horrible. That's sad. It's that very is, sad. Yeah. It's rough, but I think I would like him to be in another movie. I would like there to be like a Man of Steel two. Or kinda. why don't you do a, a Superman? What's the what? What am I thinking of? Red Superman. Superman's a communist. Oh, Superman, yeah. Red Sun. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be kind of heavy, man. <laughs> that'd be super heavy. Like, I could see that, I could see them doing that, like, on an Elseworld, or even doing yeah. that, like, in the Supergirl, uh, uh, CW show. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> but do a whole movie? Yeah. That would be Are cool. you the one person watching Supergirl right I'll, now? I'll watch it all, man. <laughs> oh, I have man. to know. I have to, <laughs> you I, have to know. I have to understand, dude. That's that's my biggest problem. Like I've watched all ten seasons of Smallville. I didn't want oh, to. I geez. really didn't. But it had to happen, man. Like I had to understand how bad it was. And don't get me wrong. Like the CW shows are hit and miss. I'm gonna uh-huh. lay it to you like this: Supergirl's okay. Flash this season is garbage. Arrow this season is good. Heroes is goofy, and that's just about it. This is fine. Something to watch on Hulu, but uh, but yeah, that's true. But yeah, man, uh, I'm kind of hyped for Henry Cavill. He, they really let him be Superman in this movie, like the Superman I know. 
and not mm. this dark brooding super villain. You know what I'm saying? But actually Superman. Oh. Yeah, I think the Superman that I liked the most um, was in a uh, – it was in an animated mm. movie. It was uh, – what was it? It was the one that Batman – the killing – they made the killing joke into uh, – no, it wasn't the killing joke. It, I think it was just called The Dark Knight. No, oh, Dark, uh, Dark Knight no, Returns? Yeah, something like that. It's where, like, Batman – uh, beats up a guy who's like the leader of a gang, and then the gang starts following Batman. Yeah, that's Batman like, Returns. The Dark Knight okay. Returns. The Dark Knight. Yes, returns. yes. The Frank Miller uh, comic. Right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's Frank Miller. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. And Batman has old grizzled Batman has to fight Superman and and beat yeah. him and all that good stuff. Yeah, and I like how Superman. There's like a nuke that goes off. And then Superman, like, absorbs it, but then he, like, sucks the energy from the... There's, like, a great scene where Superman, like, takes out all the life from around him yeah. to, to get back to normal. And it's uh, like, I didn't know a nuclear bomb could do that. Yeah, man. This is this is Frank, this is Frank Miller. And yeah. He's like the Willy Wonka of, like, deconstructing superheroes. Whatever you want, man. Oh, man. Speaking of superheroes, the last bit of news is I'll talk, it seems like I talk about this game on every podcast, but I can't help it. Um, Marvel's Capcom Infinite introduces three new characters. Uh, the Winter Soldier, Black Widow, and the reintroduction of Venom. And they show off the gameplay for the game. And okay. the game just looks like a Flash. It's like a Flash game. And <laughs> it, it just looks... Venom looks good. Don't get me wrong. But just the, the the graphics engine they chose for this game is horrible, man. Just can't. It reminds me of uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Right. Or like, yeah. The graphics they are better. Back a few years. Yeah, they stepped back a few years. Like, I just want the. I would buy the game if they just did a, a total aesthetic overhaul. <laughs> Even that would be unprecedented. You know what I'm saying? But just do a complete aesthetic overhaul, and just make the game look different. You know what I mean? Just, just, just do it. Nobody likes it, you know. But apparently, it's like the, one of the best played Marvel games ever, which is why I'm always so compelled to play it because I want to yeah. be able to play the good fighting game. But I don't know. I, pr- I predict there's like several like youth centers out there going, "What game can we buy that youth can play that doesn't have any vi- like bloody violence in it?" That's one and of them. All, yep. It's like, yeah, let's buy a million copies of that. Oh yeah, because <laughs> it's it's not really that violent. It's yeah. cartoon violence. If you're gonna if you're gonna show your youth center the Avengers, you might as well show them this game. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You're not gonna see anything crazy. There isn't anything overly satanic unless you just want to go into like Ghost Rider, but even he is not that bad. <laughs> No. Uh, and the game is very family friendly and all that. It's just that even with these three new characters, just really quick, uh, Winter Soldier looks fine. He shoots guns. Uh, Black Widow looks fine. She shoots guns. And then there's Venom, who looks great, you know, in action. <laughs> so I'm just like, man, I'm holding my hands out with money in my hands, like thrill me. And they haven't mm-hmm. done anything to do that yet. So. And I never like it when people and they introduce in fighting games people that shoot guns. Yeah, <laughs> because it doesn't make sense to me. Because anybody can win a fight when they just got a gun in their hand, right? Yeah, <laughs> Jeez, it's like geez. I can handle like uh, Leatherface being in Mortal Kombat and he's like hitting you multiple times with the chainsaw and you still don't like explode or something like that. Right. But uh, it's like you gotta draw the line somewhere. And especially when you already have like five other characters that have guns, you know, like Gamora uses guns, bang, bang. Uh, Chris Renfield uses guns. Uh, there's, there's a couple of other characters in the game. It's almost like five or six characters that, ha- that are gun based combatants. And yeah. it's like, switch it up. You know what I mean? Like mix it up. We don't need Black Widow and the Winter Soldier in the game. They pretty much are the same character in regards to their skill set. You know what I mean? Just... Yeah. Another thing is, why is it all Marvel characters right now? Because Marvel's well, the one fronting the money. Oh. Capcom is broke, man. Capcom's been broke. <laughs> Marvel's fronting the money. That's why, I if I had to choose between Winter Soldier and Black Widow to be in the game, I would choose Black yeah. Widow, uh, because it's it's diversity, 
Yeah. And she's a better known character. And I think she could have a more interesting move set if you mix them together. You know yeah. what I mean? But you don't need both of those characters. It's like having Ryu and Ken. You know what I mean? Even though right. people are going to yell That's at true. me. Because people are like, no, Ryu and Ken are completely different fighters. So like, yeah, but you don't need two Shotos. You know what I mean? It's like, especially when you're, tr- when you're trying to diversify the roster. Exactly. You know? So I'm just like, come on, guys. Come on, Marvel. Get it together. That could have been a hundred other characters. You know what I mean? But yeah, say love you. But they really need to add is Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. <laughs> Howard the Duck would be in a giant mech, whereas it has a duck bill face like Gurren Lagan. Yeah, you have a giant. Well, ci- you have a giant cigar out of his mouth. It'd be dope. Well, I see. I can see because uh, it looks like you can do like team combat in the game. Right. You you would have uh, Howard the Duck. Uh, out of mech then the mech being the other person and then they could do have the superpower together and like they both like join forces or whatever they could do a, a cool cutscene. yeah I man i really want to see like how the duck like laying an egg and then throwing it at the other player man how the duck's a male a male duck man he can't lay eggs well that could be the joke he's like where'd this uh, come from yeah. Well, yeah jeez that'd yeah. be dope I want him and like She-Hulk to be detectives in like a gumshoe animated series. That would blow my mind away. Yeah. <laughs> who else? Who else to like? I remember having like a She-Hulk comic back when like my my parents like got me like five comic books for my birthday. Right. And one of them was like She-Hulk. She doesn't her she doesn't turn into Hulk because of anger. She turns into Hulk because she's sad. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh okay, gee. okay. That's let's awesome. go to the Punisher now. Yeah, moving <laughs> yeah. on. Let's go to the Punisher with his ponytail that yeah. looks like Steven Seagal. Oh, jeez, you're talking about like Punisher 2099. <laughs> yeah, uh, like that. yeah, yikes. All right, I have to run away from Punisher 2099 because he 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 overall frightens me. Oh man, good news. Good news. Perfect. So we're going to go into our questions. And as always, if you'd like to ask a question to me, to Winter, to the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, he's here. He's a, he's a little salty, but we'll get him. We'll get him where he needs to be. Um, you can send those questions to Masters of the Nerdiverse Cast at gmail.com. That is Masters of the Nerdiverse Cast at gmail.com. Send me a question. I'll answer it. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. If you, you send a question, you'll be a lot cooler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. First question. If you had to choose a favorite voice actor, who would it be? Oh, Mark Hamill. Hands oh. down. Ah, you know what? I was going to say Mark Hamill because his Joker is, like, epic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he had a really good Green Goblin on Spider-Man Animated Series. No, Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin. Okay, there you go. He played Hobgoblin. Yeah, man. Hands down, Mark Hamill. So, yeah. out of between Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy, you'll you'll still pick Mark Hamill. Oh yeah. Yeah, because Kevin Conroy doesn't do other things than Batman. You know what I'm right. saying? Well, like I also I like Peter Weller's Batman. Yeah. In uh, The Dark Knight Returns. Right. So, uh, I can't get wrong with that. Peter Weller. Robocop. To, yeah. Yeah. Robocop. And also professor of Roman architecture in Oxford. Did you know that? <laughs> what? No, he isn't. Shut up. Yeah, Peter Weller, after after his career didn't go so well, uh, he, he went to he went back to college, and now he has like a degree in like ancient architecture or ancient Roman history. See, I'm gonna and make he host, yeah. He hosted a whole show about like Roman history and uh, like how they built the roads. <laughs> and I remember, like, this is what? RoboCop. Why is he? Why is he here? <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell the lore right now. After he finished building RoboCop, Doc yeah. Brown in the time machine says, "Peter, we have to do something about your kids." He threw him in the time machine and dropped him off in ancient Rome for ten <laughs> years, where he lived, he loved, and he fought for ancient Rome. He sends yeah. him back to the future, to where since he's so knowledgeable about Rome, he just became a professor. Yeah. It's a, uh, we can make that into Bonsai Buckaroo 2 oh, or something get, like that. Don't get me started on Buckaroo Bonsai, dude. Okay, Buckaroo. <laughs> Buck, buckaroo. Okay, um, all right. So, Masaka. Uh, yeah. Voice actor. So uh, Mark Hamill. 
Good. Uh, if I needed to pick any more, it'd be P- Peter Weller, uh, the guy who did like Looney Tunes, Mel Blank. <laughs> yeah, Mel Blank. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Or and then uh, I don't know. I used to like Family Guy, so maybe self Seth, Seth, Seth MacFarlane. Like I've met that yeah. guy before. He's all right. He's he's pretty good. His entourage. Oh, his, Mr. Big Shot. No, I was at the Hollywood Bowl <laughs> going to see John Williams. And I'm going yeah. to the bathroom and like who's in front of me but Seth MacFarlane trying to use the bathroom. Yeah. So I chewed the fat with him for like two seconds and he went and handled his biz and broke out with his entourage. It was yeah. Interesting. I'm uh, going to steal all your jokes. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> he just clicks me over my head and steals all my jokes. Yeah. Bastard. Uh, if I had to pick a voice actor, it'd be Johnny and Bosch. And he's well known in the anime circles, um, as a, as a big voice actor. He does the voice of uh, one of my favorite characters of all time, Vash's Stampede uh, from Trigun. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite animes. He also did the voice of Kurosaki Ichigo from Bleach, which is another. Oh, okay. He did um, Jonathan Joestar from Jozo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, and he was also the voice of Nero from Devil May Cry 4. So it was just... We're uh, back to this Devil May Cry stuff. I that's, don't... He's that's why I like him, man. He's <laughs> yeah. he's batting he's batting eight hundred for me, man. He's just one of my favorite <laughs> voice actors. Outside of that, I really like. Uh, uh, you mentioned the guy who did the voices of Red and Stimpy. I, f- I forget his name. Oh. Yeah, I know who you're talking. You know about. I'm talking he... about. He does he does a ton of voices, dude. He's all yeah. over the place. And I like Cree Summers. Cree Summers is he does a lot of voices. She did the voice. Of um, voices from Rugrats, she did some voices in Teen Titans. Right. Uh, she was she did um, she's I think she's number three and um, Kids Next Door. She's like a really cool African American voice actress, and she's like one of my favorites. Oh man! Next question: what what qualifies? Uh, what qualities do you think make a good video game? All right, you can go. You can start with this. Okay. I need to think about. Yeah, go yeah. for it. Yeah. It's very simple. You want to make a good video game, there's certain qualities that you have to abide by. Uh, one of them, solid gameplay. The game has to be fun. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you, you have to pick it up and immediately not be tripping over the gameplay. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's so many games where you turn it on and it's so awkward you just turn it back off because it just doesn't feel comfortable. You know what I mean? Uh, also, uh, a compelling story is always good. Sometimes that can save your game. You know what I mean? That's like, true. like uh, a lot of the eco games, uh, Shadow of the Colossus, uh, The Last Guardian, the gameplay isn't stellar. You know, you're not doing all types of sick combos and getting scores, but the game, but the story is so compelling that it just draws you in. Right. You know, you know what I mean? And lastly, would be a fresh aesthetic. Does it look cool? You know what I mean? Like one of the reasons I bought Borderlands because it was this weird shell shaded first person shooter i've never saw anything like it before you know what i mean so i was just like i gotta pick this up or like guilty gear which is the sharp anime 3d kind of aesthetic mm-hmm. um it just was like man this looks like nothing i've ever played before man uh horizon zero dawn it, the list goes on and on just as long as your game looks fresh and catches the eye you will get that early adapter and with good gameplay and a compelling story you can't go wrong okay um, so the qualities I have for a good game or not, uh, the first one would be, uh, the game has to be able to be played by someone in, um, who is a beginner gamer yeah, and also an expert gamer and they can still both have a good time. For instance, uh, like Mario would be a good example yeah or like this new one where there's like several different ways of getting to the end of the level right um you can go super super uh like intricate le- uh, ways so that you can get everything you everything in the map um so yeah that would be one way and i guess that could also be summed up with like uh linear or non-linear style play yeah similar to like grand theft auto 5 right or like grand theft auto in general Another instance would be replay value. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's replay, a big one. Yeah, that's a huge one. Because now, okay, so you've beaten the main storyline. Now what do you do? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of games, they don't have a good answer for it. Right. <laughs> they just say, repeat the same level. <laughs> right. But, uh, um, 
what they could do instead is well, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for that right now. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's an obstacle. It's an obstacle, man. You know. Yeah. But connected with this, I guess I'll make this my third one is um so connected with the replay would be uh you have to have like on point your multiplayer. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, because once the game is over and you ask that question, okay, what do I do with this game that is sixty dollars? You gotta have like uh you have to add the have the added value of like, well there's a whole other side to this game right. that is actually going to be around a lot longer mm-hmm. than the actual storyline. Yeah. Like once one like the storyline is just gonna be gone in about a couple of months. Like oh. people are not gonna care about the I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. That's the yeah. case, you know? Yeah. So then multiplayer is going to be the thing that they still add DLCs to all this other stuff. So you got to have a good multiplayer and a game that kind of hits like all those buttons somewhat is like I said, um, well, I guess they don't all hit it, but on the top of my head for like good replay value and good multiplayer is a game called Rocket League. I don't know if you Yeah, remember. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, mostly I, I like games like that because they always like have like it's end of the tunnel like you can get paid tournament money if mm-hmm. you win the tournament and that's the type of stuff that makes me go like oh i gotta train yeah I do this. gotta get active man yeah well not active it is a video game well as active <laughs> as you can right <laughs> yes yes uh my fingers do the working out <laughs> so it's all about like, nothing wrong with muscle memory man i'm a musician uh yeah. by recreation and I, I wonder like, that. Yeah. I you're a musician. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bassist, man. So it's like, yeah, uh, muscle memory is your friend. You know what I mean? It's, and it just tacks right on to uh, multiplayer games. My forte is fighting games. And like, right. you, like you mentioned earlier, the campaign's only going to last so long. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you need that replayability to keep you engaged in the game. You know what I mean? And that's where a good fighting system comes in or a good multiplayer or good maps Right. Uh, incentives to continue, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like a game like Overwatch, where the the story is buried in the lore, right? Yeah. But the game is so damn fun to play that you're constantly drawn back with new character designs, uh, new new loadouts, new uh, new maps, uh, new ways to play. And it just keeps you engaged. It's it's almost for me one of my favorite multiplayer's of the year. Just because it keeps it keeps you wanting to play it. It, keep, it stays fresh. You know what I mean? Yeah, I actually have Overwatch, but I've had to uninstall it due to uh, my anger. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, I have to ask who who did you main? Oh, Roadhog. Oh, sick dude. That's what's up, man. <laughs> I was uh, as long as you're not a Hanzo main. <laughs> oh no, no, like no, Roadhog. Like if you if you looked at like how many hours I played all the other players, there would be like two six hours. I've had the game for like six months, right? But then Roadhog would be like twenty eight, twenty nine. Yeah, hours. that was me. You'd <laughs> yeah. be like, it would be like McCree here, Zendata, Zendata, uh, Zenyatta yeah. here, but then like my Zarya is like at twenty nine hours. You know, that's yeah. my yeah. She's my she's protector of Russian skies. Sorry, it's my babe. That's Bay right there. Yeah, oh. but I I had to get out of that game because I was turning into like a like I was playing it nonstop and then uh. losing friends. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you were going down the hole, man. You were yeah. You're on your road to the top and losing friends. How are we ever going to get the BlizzCon this way? You got to do <laughs> Man, you're not picking up that, uh, you're not picking up that Lucio. Right. I need you to start picking up that Lucio. We're going to kick you off the team. He's like, but man, we went to elementary school together. doesn't matter. Right. He's like, oh, snap. Oh, jeez. I'll say, I'll save this story for another time. That's but okay. It, there, there is definitely an Overwatch story behind Oh, jeez. Yeah. There's no love lost. No. Oh, uh, last question. Uh, what's the weirdest thing you've ever wanted to own? Um, well, right now I'm, I'm in the, st- like, I'm wanting to own a tobacco pipe. <laughs> I don't know if that's too weird or like, mm-hmm. that's not weird at all, but it's like, I, it's like, I'll be sitting in my house and I'll go, 
you know, it would be really cool if I learned how to smoke a tobacco pipe. But then I was like, <laughs> but then if you like, if you like research, it's like, uh, there, there's either a lot of people going, yeah, tobacco pipe, smoking tobacco out of a pipe doesn't do anything to your health. You're all good to go. Or then you cut to the doctors going, yeah, it's about the equivalent of you smoking a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, you're slowly <laughs> killing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So then I go, well, why don't I get a vape pen in the shape of tobacco pipe? Yeah. And it's like, well, have you ever heard about water crystals in your lungs? I'm like, never heard of that. Don't want to know what don't it is. It. Yeah, don't, don't <laughs> scare me, man. Like, uh, don't go on WebMD. Like, I, my company that I work for for my day-to-day – uh, mm-hmm. Just acquired WebMD, and it's like, yeah, don't. If you're a hypo- hypochondriac, just steer clear of that website, man. Doesn't feel well, WebMD. You're going to die tomorrow. You're going to die. <laughs> man, I got a headache. You have a brain tumor. What? Yeah. <laughs> I have to Keep go to the doctor seek now. Medical attention ASAP. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like you cut your finger. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. I have something that's a bit weird, but I have to explain it. So if I have to pick a weird thing that I want, is what I want. Is it uh, industrial light magic, a uh, Stan Winston level, a uh, Velociraptor, to sit on the groom's side for when I get married? This is what Nothing I want. Nothing wrong with that. So uh-huh. when they like, I just want it there, and I want like when the, when I'm about to marry my future wifey or whatever, uh-huh. and in the, in the who's pa- a listener to this podcast? Oh, thank you for putting that out there for me. Hopefully <laughs> she's listening. She's like, I'll take your raptor. Uh, and when when the when the priest of uh, the pastor says, "Is there any, you know, objections?" I want the raptor to roar. And I want people to laugh and have a good time. And I want it to be the uh, I want it to have a top hat, a monocle, and a little tie. Yeah. And I want it to like do little things when I, like when we're throwing rice and stuff. I just want it in the audience. That's all I want. Like, so fuck. you picture this raptor. As like the R two D two or Chewbacca yes, situation. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes. It's like you know, like there's a ceremony at the end of like of uh, a New Hope, and they're all getting yeah. their neck their, me- their necklaces and shit. And yeah. you see Chewbacca do the roar at the end and the super hype. That's yeah. what I want. Oh, Raptor! Oh, uh, that uh, Raptor! Cut to end credits, and and yeah. then we we'll just put him in the garage and take him out on special occasions. And, yeah. <laughs> Be the house Raptor. All right. That's all I want. Like, my future wifey can arrange whatever she wants for the wedding. I don't care. I will wear yeah. whatever. I just want okay. my raptor. I just want my raptor. You've heard it here first, ladies. He'll wear whatever you want. Whatever you wedding. like. I don't care. Yeah. As long as I have my like, a- my animatronic raptor in the in the seats. So it could go. even be, like, Jumanji Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> what year is this i don't care yeah. i'm down if we want to go out to like lord of the rings and i'm dressed like you know king arathorn i'm, I'm yeah. fine i don't care is the raptor there yeah. okay we're good we in there oh that's so dumb we're, we've I've automatically lost like half a half percentage of my listeners on that one i don't care this is me this is, the this is, weddings are for for when dumb things should happen. Exactly, because I mean, it's, it's only like, going to happen once. Yeah, right? so it's like let's release a bunch of doves and <laughs> not like pay attention to the fact that they might all die by the end of the next week. Yeah, just feed <laughs> so, them, feed them right so they'll explode. Yeah. We don't have to worry yeah. about that. We're already in the yeah. car. You know? Oh, geez. Uh, winter. What are you looking forward to next week? I'm looking forward to playing some Call of Duty World War II still. Call of Duty. Yeah. And I'm slowly getting back on track with updating all my social media stuff. Good. uh, It's it's kind of like um, trying to get this engine up and running again. Yeah. Yeah. For all those people out there who want to do stuff online, may it be art, may it be video, may it be cooking, may it be podcasting. Having a strong social media, uh, um, a strong social media presence is important. So remember to post often, at least three times a week. Make sure that all of your keywords and all of your uh, tags are based on a particular demographic. And don't be afraid to spend a little money on what you want to do. Because the more people that are going to see your project, the more eyes you're going to get on it. And hopefully the more subscribers you're going to get. So just a little pro tip from Mike G. You want to stay on top of your social media uh, marketing and you always want to stay on top of your seo optimization 
important things. Yeah, and I also hope to get back. I uh, I am a script writer as a passion sort of thing. Like I write scripts, right? And uh, I want to. I've been toying with one for like the last couple of years um, that I want to actually update and get back out there submitting. So hey, man, just see what I'm... there's nothing to it but to do it, man. All they can say is no. Definitely throw exactly. it out there. See and what sticks. I just, I just call them trash online, and then we move on. <laughs> <laughs> you just flame them online yeah. and move on to the next. I heard he was friends with Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's rough, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Addy. <laughs> I, 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 I made a meme today. <laughs> okay, this is how we're going to – because I still – I need to plug in – I need to plug something. Okay. So, uh <laughs> Don't well, get uncomfortable. No, no, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So, go for it, and then I'm going to do my closing, okay? And okay. Then I'm gonna do what I, go for it. So I've created a new uh, page on Facebook called Trash Monk Memes 3000, <laughs> which is an outlet for me to make memes and that I really enjoy. So then, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so then I made a meme that's a picture of Darth Vader going um, – uh, I'm sorry that I blew up your planet. I was doing it. I was an um, inappropriate drunk misconduct, and I'm gay. That's the thing that. Okay. So that's to be. Um, what? So, <laughs> okay. So, so the background to this is that when the allegations of what Kevin Spacey did came out, he made an apology that was verbatim what I just quoted <laughs> onto the meme. Right. That uh, he he like he was trying to like uh, shift the vision that he like he was trying to shift what the story was by him coming out as gay. Mm-hmm. So the meme is like Darth Vader is trying to do the same Jeez. thing, That's... and I thought that was hilarious. But man. people, it's a little too late. A lot of people don't get it. No so... man, you know that's a twenty four hour uh, news twenty four hour news cycle, man. You like yeah. what's what's funny is is that. The, like the LBGT community were not feeling that man. They were like, "Whatever, man." Like, right? You coming out has nothing to do with what you've done. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not going to embrace right. you, which which is which is right, man. Forget that guy, dude. He's a scumbag. Yeah. You know, and I love the Usual Suspects. It's like one of my favorite movies of all time. Right. But I've learned that you have to separate the act, the artist from the art. You know what I'm right. saying? Otherwise, you'll be miserable. Like, ugh. But yeah, definitely shout outs to your meme channel. Keep you, you, Can I describe another meme? To, yeah. Knock <laughs> knock yourself out, man. Go for okay. it. Because since you said the word scumbag, you triggered like one of the things, one of the first memes I made. So uh, the wording is Louis C.K. did what? Dot, dot, dot. What a scumbag. And it's a picture of Bill Cosby doing this one. <laughs> oh jeez bill don't go after bill man uh, bill, bill's been through enough <laughs> i i still have the books that i bought of his when i was a child yeah man. yeah fat albert yeah, yeah. no i'm talking about fatherhood he had a book called fatherhood out oh yikes and i was reading that <laughs> oh jeez yeah man you're on your you're on, you're on the path of becoming a meme lord you know what I'm saying? I'll do it. He said, yeah. I'll do it. Oh, man. My week. Uh, looking forward to playing more Assassin's Creed Origins. Kind of hopefully that game doesn't disappoint me. Uh, definitely looking forward to finishing Mindhunter. Gotta finish that. Gotta finish that. Right. I may go see Justice League again sometime this week. I'll just to refresh myself. And... Uh, still fight the feeling of buying Marvel. So just not going to do it, but it's, it's like an addiction, you know, it just keeps coming back. That's oh, true. Yeah, man. Gotta love it. Good show. Good show. Yeah. Good show. I'm Til loving it. Time. Till next time. So let everybody know where they can find you winter. Uh, find me on Instagram at winter capital I, capital I, capital I. Follow me on Twitter, and you can actually go to my website, wintersturdevent.com. That's S-T-U-R-T-E-A-V-N-T. But if you just type in my name in Google, you'll find me. There's not a lot of winters running around. Do it. Do it. Come on. Do it. Do it. Uh, Good times. As as for me, you can always find me on Twitter, 
That is at M Nerdiverse. That's at N in at M N Nerdiverse spelled out. And you can always find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, uh, the uh, Cybertron. We're, we're there. You know, Soundwave hooks us up. Mm-hmm. And um, this was, I'm happy to have you back on the show, man. It's, it's, it's becoming a pleasure. Just, you know, to be able to just no problem. talk about this stuff and kind of let down the old hair. And I'm going to end the show with a quote from the from the immortal George Costanza. It's not a lie if you believe it. There you go. That's the worst advice I can give anyone. That's, I like it. But I it's like true. It. But it's true. Yeah. Of course, this I is. Lo- I love Seinfeld. <laughs> I That's love Seinfeld. We, we're gonna have we're gonna need a Seinfeld cast one of these days because I can talk right. Seinfeld for hours. Oh man! But of course, I've been your host, Mike G, and I will always ask you to go that one step beyond. <laughs>